Hi guys! In this tutorial, I'll show you some tips on configuring Krita user interface to maximize the canvas, make it less distracting while painting, and to even make your work a little bit faster. I'm going to show how to change from this default look to that setup that I use. I'm aware that this topic is highly subjective and you may like how Krita looks by default, but I'm sure uh, that even then you'll find here some tips and ideas you'll like. I won't be talking about the most obvious things. I assume that uh, you already know how to bring dockers to your canvas, move them around, or save the workspace. I want to focus about those less common changes that you can make. Okay, so let's jump into it. In the settings, you can find some color schemes available by default but you can easily import and create this on your own. Navigate to Settings, Manage Resources and click the Open Resource Folder button. This way you can open the folder in which Krita stores all its data. Brushes, textures, add-ons and more. So if you've never been here before, pin it or remember how to reach it. Here you can find this empty color schemes folder. This is where we'll put our first custom color scheme. The first one has to be downloaded of course. Just go to my resource folder where you can find my color templates. The newest one is this redesign file. Once you add a new color file to the folder, you'll have to restart Krita, as everything from here get loaded only at the start of the program. But if you're editing the color file, it's enough to just pick the theme once again to update it. You don't need to restart Krita. Speaking of editing the file, if you open it with any text editor, you'll find all these colors in hex code that Krita uses to color the interface. It's a general type of file and Krita uses only some of these records. I used only gray colors, so in my template you can easily identify those variables as they have the same R, G and B values. Finishing off the color topic, the color in the canvas is not taken from those files. You have to manually set the main canvas and sub-window background in two places in settings. Speaking of sub-windows mode, basically we have two modes to display multiple documents. The default one is tabs, where you have to pick one open document you want to display. But there's an alternative to that, which gives way more flexibility in different workflows and I personally really advise to try it. You'll find it in the general tab of the settings. Now, when you open more than one document, you can have all of them displayed at once. You can go to Window, Tile to organize them. The active document always goes to the left, so just grab one of them with a middle click and repeat the Tile action if the order was wrong. Then it's easy to adjust their width. This way you can have individual control over your reference images or open another view of your document. If you change the soft proofing profile from Smeg to Grayscale, you can even get a desaturated overview by pressing Ctrl Y. As we are already in settings, this one was talked about many times, but I'll show it once more. If you want to have more brush presets than 10 in your pop-up palette, just go to settings and change the value in general miscellaneous tab. Nice and simple. In Krita, you can have up to two bars filled with different buttons. You can make them form one or two lines or even move them to the bottom of the screen. Settings toolbars shown, we can deactivate one or both of them. Cool thing is that you can change the buttons that are in it in settings, configure toolbars. You can find any action on the left and move it to the right, so it appears in a toolbar. Note that these expanding spacers let you align the whole thing to the left, right, or center it. We have our most important settings changed, so let's move to maximizing the canvas. First, and a bit obvious thing, is the full screen mode that you can get with the Ctrl Shift F. This allows you to get rid of all the system information, in some cases even making Krita faster. Then, if you learn how to use virtual desktops, you can stay in it forever. The second option is the canvas only mode that hides the interface elements. In settings, you have a separate tab where you can choose what to hide in this mode. 
Docker scroll bars can be hidden with kinetic scrolling. You can also hide canvas scroll bars, as the canvas can be moved using the space or middle mouse button. Note that the status bar can be hidden by clicking View on top of the screen. It's not in usual settings. All the dockers can be squashed until they reach their minimal width. The widest of the default dockers right now is the color selector, but we don't need it to be in a docker. If you go to the keyboard shortcuts in settings, you can find a show color selector feature with the default shortcut of Shift I. If you switch it to something close to your non dominant hand, you can display the color picker of your lacking under your cursor. Let's dive into more hardcore changes. Recently, in the Krita community, many plugins changing the UI started to appear. With scripting, it's possible to make much deeper changes in the overall style than with the usual methods. I'll especially recommend this one that can change the Krita style to look more flat and unified, as well as move the tool options to the new widget in the corner of the canvas. Usually, the creators provide you with the installation instructions, but I'll show the easiest way to do it, which should work with most of the plugins. We navigate to the plugin page and download the zip file with the add-on. Then, in Krita, we go to Tools, Scripts, and pick Import Python Plugin. It will install the plugin from the packed zip file. We need to restart Krita to make her see that something was added. Second stage is activation. In settings, there is a special tab for add-ons where you need to make a tick near the name of the plugin. The very last restart is needed here, but once you do it, the add-on should be installed and active. For instance, I can toggle its features here on the top menu. If the importer script doesn't work properly, you can always install it manually. Just in case, I'll show you how. Go to the resource folder, the one where we imported color themes. There is a PyCrita folder where you can put the plugin files, .desktop and a folder with some code. If the folder, apart from PyCrita folder, also has the one called Actions, just place its content in the Actions folder in the Krita resources. Now you just need to activate it in the settings and restart Krita. I guess that's all I have for you today. As you can see, there are a lot of things that can be done to the user interface. I hope that this tutorial will help you to customize Krita exactly for your specific needs. In the description you will find all of these resources I was talking about, as well as my own plugin, Subwindow Organizer, that helps to manage multiple open documents. Cheers!